Hello, everybody. Uh, we would like to invite you to visit our online conference about uh, LiDAR survey. And today we will show you uh, some real examples of data processing, of LiDAR data processing. And we will show you our new product uh, for terrestrial survey with uh, LiDAR. And uh, um, we invite our users who already use, uh, used our LiDAR for real uh, survey projects. And uh, we will show you how to use LiDAR, uh, our LiDAR solution for forest survey, for road construction survey, and for mapping. And uh, we would like to wait uh, while uh, other members join our conference and then we will start. Let's start, uh, let's wait a few minutes and we will start. Maxim, could you say me when we shall start our presentation? Uh, mm -hmm. If anyone will have any questions, you can uh, ask your questions in Q&A uh, section in the Zoom app. We will answer all the questions uh, later after the presentation. И показ экрана не запрещен. So um, today we would like to represent our new product. Uh, it's uh, uh, our existing LiDAR, uh, which can be installed not only on the drone, but can be installed on the backpack. And you can use uh, our LiDAR solution for aerial survey and terrestrial survey. You can, you can install the same LiDAR system on the car, on the backpack, or on the drone. And as soon as uh, our LiDAR has a 360 degrees uh, view, um, you can use it in uh, any way. And after that, you can easily combine data set uh, to one uh, point cloud uh, to provide a more detailed point cloud uh, to get some uh, details which, is not, uh, which, uh, which are not available from, from air. And uh, before, uh, before showing real projects of using terrestrial uh, LiDAR survey combined with aerial LiDAR survey, I would like to uh, to make a small presentation about our system, what we already designed, what we use for survey. And after that, our uh, professional users who already, uh, who already uh, bought LiDAR equipment uh, for, for their uh, survey purposes, so they will make some presentation to show you real results. Uh, and uh, they will share their experience, how to use LiDAR. Uh, you, you can ask any questions to them or you can ask questions to, to me, to, to our team, and we will, uh, we, we will try to answer all your questions. And uh, you, can write with, uh, you can write messages, and Maxim, uh, my partner, uh, will, uh, uh, will, uh, <clears throat> will answer you in a, in a chat, or I will answer uh, by myself. OK, so uh, as you already know, uh, uh, Half of the year, uh, half of the year ago, we launched our new product. It's a, a lidar solution which can be easily installed on Matis 200 or Matis 300. And before, uh, we use this uh, equipment just only for aerial survey. But uh, as soon as we use uh, lidar, uh, lidar based on Velodyne head, and Velodyne has had uh, has a 360 degrees uh, view and it has very good accuracy, stable accuracy. 
uh, we can use the same uh, equipment which can be installed on the drone or on the backpack. And uh, what we have inside of our solution? Uh, inside of our solution, uh, we, we have uh, very precise IMU, GNSS receiver, mic microcomputer to, to synchronize all, uh, all parts of devices together and to provide very precise uh, uh, data set and to process data. And today I will show you the whole, uh, I, I will show you full uh, workflow uh, from capturing data uh, to point cloud generation. And I will show you how to create maps and uh, other products of the basis of very precise and detailed point cloud. And uh, I think LiDAR it's a uh, future. And as soon as we, uh, as soon as we create solution, which has a very affordable price and uh, uh, it costs less than $20,000 and uh, it provides results in uh, 10 times faster than photogrammetry and it provides stable results in comparison of photogrammetry. Um, uh, and you can measure terrain under the trees and you can measure a lot of additional information which is, uh, which is not possible to to get uh, from, uh, from images, from photogrammetry. I think LiDAR will... Uh, conquer the market within one or two years. And all professional surveyors will use LiDAR equipment. And the main advantage that you can uh, not only, uh, you can, uh, LiDAR provides very fast data processing. It provides, uh, it provides very stable results. And you, can survey, and you can survey in any light condition. For example, we have uh, real examples of survey when we made, when we made survey in the night, uh, in the, uh, in a polar, po polar night when uh, there is no any sun and it's not possible to use photogrammetry at all because there is no uh, light to make a photos. But with the LiDAR, you can make survey as well. And uh, this, uh, this advantage allows you to, uh, to get more than 1,000 uh, 1, hectares per day of LiDAR data set. Why? Why? Because you... Uh, you are not sticked to, to, light, to, to lighting condition to, to the sun and you can make survey at night as well. Um, our LiDAR system is very lightweight. Uh, the, light, uh, the weight of the light, uh, LiDAR is less than one kilo. As a result, you can easily install it on mattress 200 or mattress 300 and real flight, uh, flight time uh, starts from 22 minutes with a LiDAR uh, with a, like, uh, with a heavy head uh, of LiDAR, uh, uh, of uh, 200 LiDAR model and uh, uh, less than one kilo with a LiDAR model of, uh, uh, with, with a 100 light LiDAR model. And you can make survey with any speed uh, up to 10 meters per second. And you, uh, um, dep depends on the type of LiDAR. You can make survey from altitude uh, between 50 or 70 meters up to 170 meters. And the coverage of LiDAR of, of each flight starts from 50, uh, 50 gigatars up to 100 gigatars and more depends on the flight speed and flight altitude. Um, this one, uh, uh, this slide show, uh, shows us uh, possibility to install LiDAR on Matrix 300 or Matrix uh, 200. And uh, LiDAR has special connector which can be installed on a uh, DJI Skyport uh, or you can install it on a uh, um, battery, battery part of uh, Matrix 200 and use this uh, X, available X4S camera or other cameras such as Sony camera together with LiDAR. Uh, to get colorized point cloud. And uh, what we would like to represent today, it's a backpack, which can be uh, used for terrestrial survey. And uh, uh, you just need to remove LiDAR from the drone and, and install LiDAR with a special mounting feature on your backpack and uh, connect uh, battery. We, we provide connectors for the batteries of Mavic 2 Pro, for example, or we, we can provide uh, any additional battery just to uh, just to uh, uh, just to uh, to ensure that uh, lidar will work more than one one hour and more, and um, uh, it's it's very easy to to combine uh, different solutions. And after that, you will process data data set automatically, 
and you will get point cloud from aerial survey and uh, you will get point cloud from terrestrial uh, survey automatically in the same coordinate system and you don't need any ground control points uh, to uh, merge uh, different types of data set. Uh, as I already said, our LIDAR, LIDAR solution uh, um, has very precise IMU inside and uh, it has a two frequency GNSS receiver which can work up to 20 gears rate and it provides uh, any GLONASS, GPS, B, Google LA as best possibility to use. And, uh, um, and it is very stable as well as for terrestrial survey on the ground or for, for aerial survey. And uh, right now I would like to show you the real projects which we made uh, for road construction survey uh, in very deep vegetation area. And uh, um, our customer and our partner uh, has a project to, uh, for road construction design. And uh, uh, this area was totally covered by forest and forest was very deep. And uh, it, this one is an example of the forest, uh, just image from, uh, from the drone. And you can see if we, we, if we use photogrammetry, it's not possible to get uh, precise terrain level. It, it's, uh, it's totally impossible to get terrain level in such deep vegetation in such forest areas. And this one example of uh, forest, and you see that the forest is very deep and uh, um, uh, you, could, you can't see any ground from the image. And this one, uh, a photo, real photo from, uh, from our projects. And you see that there are a lot of uh, trees and there are a lot of bushes on the area. And it, it's not possible to use any, dish, uh, any uh, common techniques for survey, such as, uh, tot, uh, such as uh, GNSS receiver, just only one possibility to use total station to make survey uh, by, your, uh, uh, by yourself. And in this case, uh, the time of survey will decrease and uh, uh, you will make survey for one or two hectares per day with a total station. But it's not possible to use GNSS receiver. And uh, just uh, uh, and, uh, in, in this case, this project, uh, it, it, it would take uh, more than one month to make survey in such deep vegetation area with a total station. But with a LiDAR, we, we made survey uh, just within uh, uh, one week. And uh, after one week, we receive uh, detailed terrain level. Um, if we are talking about data processing, I will show just a small step. First of all, you should uh, uh, post-process GNSS data together with IMU, which, which is derived from uh, which is derived from uh, uh, from LiDAR. And uh, for, for this purpose, you can use Inertial Explorer software or our cloud-based software to, uh, to create very precise uh, point, uh, to, to, to get very precise uh, trajectory. After you get trajectory, usually it takes a few minutes to post-process GNSS data together with IMU. You, you will get a very precise trajectory. And after that, you need to generate point cloud. Uh, for point cloud generation, uh, we provide uh, uh, software, uh, top LIDAR software, which, uh, which creates point cloud within one or three minutes per one flight. So after five or 10 minutes after flight, you will get, uh, you will get uh, a point cloud. So it, it's it just... So it just... Uh, it shows us that uh, uh, LiDAR survey is much faster uh, in comparison with the photogrammetry. If we use photogrammetry in this area, we will get point cloud uh, within a uh, uh, few days or one week of data processing. But with LiDAR, uh, you will get point cloud at the same time after flight. So it will take you 10 or 20 minutes to get uh, terrain level when you generate a point cloud from LiDAR. And uh, this is uh, this this one is the main advantage of, of using of lidar for your real uh, survey projects. In this case, you save your time, and you don't need to hire additional people to measure something in the forest or in the area. And you just made a survey, and after twenty minutes, you will get terrain level. And uh, later, I will show you uh, how fast is data processing in, in a real example. 
Um, as soon as we create point cloud, uh, we get a point cloud with a forest, uh, with a vegetation, with a terrain level, and uh, what we need. And uh, what we need, first of all, we colorize point cloud. For point cloud colorization, we use uh, photos from uh, images from uh, X4S camera or from uh, Sony camera. You just need uh, and uh, uh, to colorize point cloud, you don't need to make uh, the whole photogrammetry project. You just need to make air triangulation to align images. And after that, it's possible to colorize point cloud. And this one example is a, uh, uh, is a terrain profile. And you see that uh, under the very deep vegetation, you can easily measure terrain level. And this one example of, uh, of, of the contour lines, which was automatically created on the basis of point clouds, uh, uh, point cloud uh, classification. And within a few minutes after, after creating a point cloud, you can create a very detailed terrain level and after that create contour lines. And uh, uh, there are a lot of examples for these projects where we use, uh, uh, where LiDAR data set can penetrate, uh, where LiDAR can penetrate uh, very deep vegetation and you can measure terrain level. And uh, I would like to show you final results, uh, final maps, uh, fine, uh, final uh, contour lines, uh, final maps created on the basis of LiDAR data set. This one, it's just, uh, Point cloud. After point cloud, uh, after point cloud uh, uh, classification, you can measure terrain. You you can create contour lines, and you can digitize all uh, all objects, all structures such as uh, roads, uh, structure lines, uh, power lines, everything you need. And details of the point cloud allows you not to only measure uh, roads, trees, or uh, buildings, but it's possible to measure power lines uh, and power wire, uh, power wires as well. As a result, uh, our client with using of this slider, he just uh, save uh, hundred uh, uh, save uh, a lot of time uh, for field work. And what he need, what he really needed just software to uh, digitize uh, point cloud to classify point cloud, but it's very fast. I will show you. And this one example I really like. Uh, it's uh, This area is totally covered by trees, but after point cloud uh, cl classification, you can extract terrain level, you can extract all objects, and it's not possible to recognize all these objects on uh, point cloud if you're not uh, classified. And, um, uh, and, uh, but uh, with using of LiDAR, you can easily extract terrain level. And some examples of, uh, of uh, map created in AutoCAD, you just need to create terrain levels and just uh, need to create uh, contour lines. And after that, you can uh, make, make a sketch map or in any software like ArcGIS or AutoCAD, AutoCAD map or AutoCAD Civil 3D. Um, this is my uh, this is just short presentation of possibility of using lidar, and I would like to show how to process lidar data. And it's very fast. And uh, I will show you uh, lidar data processing on a real data set, and it will take us a few minutes. Uh, really, uh, from the uh, from the time when you uh, when your drone uh, has landed, uh, it just take you it it, it will take you uh, twenty minutes to get uh, point cloud and terrain level. Uh, and I will show you a uh, real data set and real software uh, uh, and just uh, switch to software and we will start to process data set. So first of all, uh, we, we need to create a very precise trajectory and I don't like to show you how to post process data, but you can easily do it with our cloud service or with inertial explorer. After that, you just load uh, uh, trajectory and you just load raw uh, LiDAR data. Uh, I just select raw LiDAR data, which derived from this one LiDAR. I select uh, trajectory. Uh, it's a file with the coordinates, with precise angles of rotation of the drone. And I can select, uh, I can select a part of, uh, of our flight to generate point cloud in order to exclude some 
uh, some some uh, flight uh, flight of landing or, or taking off. Uh, finally, what I should to do is just uh, I need to uh, to choose coordinate system which I want to uh, uh, in which I uh, I need uh, to get uh, final results. In, in this case, I just use uh, uh, UTM coordinate system. In this case, I just select UTM thirty two uh, projection, and and uh, I will select a folder where we will uh, we will save our data set, and then I just uh, start data processing, and it will take uh, maybe one or two minutes, depends on the of, uh, depends on the amount of the data set. But usually, uh, all uh, one flight is processed within one minute or three minutes, and just uh, we will wait, and uh, within few minutes we will get a, a point cloud, very precise point cloud. If you have any questions while software processing data, uh, I, I will be happy to answer. Uh, Maxim, uh, Tara ask a question. Uh, how do you check the XYZ uh, accuracy and correct classification? Uh, of course, uh, for for each project, we measure some checkpoints. All these points uh, uh, are not used for any data processing. We just measure it to check the accuracy. And I will show you on a real project uh, which we made together with Bruma. Bruma, it's our uh, uh, one of our client, and we provide. Uh, uh, training uh, for Bruma and in the real field condition, and we me we we measure all points together, and we check the accuracy together. And right now, uh, we have uh, a lot of clients who already use our equipment and who already uh, prove our accuracy. So it's very easy. Uh, I, I will show you within a few minutes. Uh, okay. No questions. Okay. And uh, now uh, all data set uh, is, is already processed and now we generate point cloud. And, uh, and after maybe 30 seconds, so we will finish to ge generate point cloud. And we, we will open it in a, in a, uh, in a software to vis visualize it. We have another one question. Uh, beside contours, what else can be survived? Uh, you can measure power lines, you can measure buildings, you can measure roads, all, 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 of, uh, all features, uh, all, uh, all objects uh, which you uh, usually measure uh, from photogrammetry uh, can be measured and can be classified and can be vectorized. And uh, our, uh, our, our future um, presentation will, will show you how to use this data set. Okay, so uh, uh, right now we process data, and uh, it it took uh, it took it took us just only two minutes to generate point cloud. This one it's a point cloud generating results, and it shows us it just took two minutes. And next step, we just open point cloud in a in a software. Uh, um, Okay, while it's opening, I already show you this uh, data set. It's already has uh, 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 RGB colors and it was uh, processed uh, uh, from the same data set. And uh, uh, what we need, we just open, we just open created point cloud. And usually, it took more time to open point cloud uh, in comparison with generation. So it it will take the same time to open point cloud, so like we process data, really. And as soon as we open, we will get uh, point cloud that should be processed as well. We need to make a strip alignment, but it's very easy, and it, you can make um, uh, you you can make it in automatic mode. It just uh, just click few buttons, and you will get very precise point clouds. I I will show you.
we have mm -hmm. another one question. Super. Mm -hmm. uh, is it possible to adjust flight alignments via GCPs? Uh, it's not necessary to adjust flight alignments with GCPs because it can be done automatically in any conditions. This one, it's a... Uh, it's an example of uh, of survey of the very hard uh, to reach terrain level and uh, with the forest and with the vegetation with everything and uh, I will show you how easy to uh, make a strip alignment. We just uh, load a generated uh, point cloud. We just open a trajectory. Uh, uh, just import trajectory which was generated as well from our software. And uh, uh, this one, it's a uh, flight, uh, flight lines. And we just need to cut, uh, uh, we need to cut uh, turning, uh, turning uh, part of trajectory and divide uh, each line uh, and divide uh, a trajectory to each line. As soon as we divided uh, traje trajectory to separate lines, so we start uh, to uh, to make uh, to divide point cloud for the flight. And uh, to uh, to answer your question, I would like to say that uh, uh, measuring from lidar is always stable. You you always get the same accuracy while because you have very precise measurement and it is direct measure, measurement in comparison with photogrammetry photogrammetry it's of course it's a good solution and of course it's very cheap solution but uh, the main disadvantage of photogrammetry is that uh, when you make survey in uh, low light conditions or in the, in the snow or in the forest it's very difficult to make air triangulation because the quality of air triangulation totally depends on the quality of the images and uh, you know uh, when when you make survey in the forest it's not possible to to align images in a simple way you usually need to make a double grid or you need to to increase flight altitude and so on but with photogrammetry it doesn't matter at all or oh, not uh, with lidar with lidar it doesn't matter at all and in, uh, and just uh, what you need and just need to uh, make some uh, uh, steps which are very uh, similar for each type. And now we divided our point cloud to, to different strips, uh, five strips, and uh, we assign color for each strip, uh, for each po point cloud, uh, uh, which uh, equals to the color of uh, trajectory. And finally, uh, and finally, what we need to get uh, to run uh, automatic alignment. It's very easy, and it, it takes uh, usually it takes a few minutes as well. And after that, as soon as we made automatic alignment, uh, we can merge our point cloud, and after that, colorize point cloud. As a result, within ten or twenty minutes, you you will get very precise point cloud, and you can classify point cloud within few minutes as well. And you can create contour lines, and you can start measurement. Uh, 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 in uh, after 20 minutes after your flight, if you had uh, if you have uh, uh, huge projects and you need to survey hundreds of hectares, so you may survey in the forest. Uh, the main solution it should be lidar. Of course, lidar it's very before lidar was very expensive, and uh, you need to spend uh, uh, fifty thousand uh, minimum to get very uh, to get. Uh, uh, to get middle way uh, lidar system, but uh, uh, but right now with our solution, you just spend less than twenty thousand uh, twenty thousand dollars, but uh, you will get the same accuracy. You will get the same equipment, like uh, uh, like, and you will get the same accuracy like you will get uh, from uh, expensive uh, lidar. And I think uh, our clients will prove it uh, in their presentation. We have another few questions. Uh, the first one, uh, do we need to calibrate LiDAR before the flight or do we need uh, do we need to calibrate LiDAR during the flight? Uh, what you need is to make uh, some special uh, 
flight preparation uh, just to create roads uh, with infinity sign just to calibrate uh, equipment uh, just to calibrate time you inside of lidar and it's very simple and with using of ugcs uh, you can do it in automatic mode and uh, after one month we will create uh, uh, online seminar together with UGCS, how to prepare flight missions. And uh, after that, we will uh, after that we will create some online seminars how to use the lidar data to vectorize power lines, for example. How to vectorize roads. So we will make some different uh, some different uh, online events to show you all examples. And now we just uh, make uh, we already made the uh, strip alignment. We uh, just uh, we just uh, calculated uh, angles, uh, uh, which uh, which is very important for lidar. It's angles, roll, uh, it's a difference in roll pitch and heading angles uh, from uh, uh, from IMU and from lidar uh, axis. It's uh, usually it's very stable, and you can use the same angles uh, for your future flights. And after, uh, as soon as we calibrated. Uh, out of, as, as you can see, it was calibrated totally automatically. And now we we get uh, georeferenced point cloud, which has accuracy between uh, three and four centimeters. And I will show you. Um, um, in a, in I, and I, I, I would like to show you real accuracy. This one, it's a point clouds which, which is already merged together and which is already colorized from images. So it, it will take more um, uh, 15 minutes. So I don't like to uh, to spend with your time, but this one, it's a point cloud. This one, it's a, a ground checkpoints, which was measured together with our user and he can prove for the accuracy with what we made together. And uh, if I show you uh, the location of uh, ground control points. You can see that it is uh, it's uh, all ground control points is situated exactly on, on the terrain level. And all points uh, are situated at the same uh, uh, with the same accuracy. And the same accuracy can be achieved uh, in a terrain uh, in in forest area. For example, uh, in the project which I show you before, in uh, for road construction survey in the forest, uh, our client measure uh, uh, checkpoints with a Genesis receiver after all leaves was disappeared uh, in a, in a, in a October, and he measure everything and he achieve and he proved accuracy and accuracy in the forest of. A, automatically created terrain was approximately 10 centimeters. So we just make automatic classification and we achieve accuracy in, uh, in altitude in the forest area within 10 centimeters. Uh, there was no any more error. It was three, five, sometimes 10 centimeters depends on some grass or something uh, in, in the forest. As you can see, the forest was very, very deep. And uh, this, one, uh, this one example is sh uh, showing us that the accuracy are very stable. And uh, it's very fast to uh, uh, to classify point cloud, and you just need to uh, to spend few minutes to classify uh, point cloud and extract terrain. Uh, if you would like, I can run with classification, but it, it takes five minutes, and uh, I already classified this point cloud. And if I uh, uh, if I if I if I show you classified terrain, it's, it will be very excited, especially in this, uh, uh, in this forest area. As you can see, uh, there is a very high slope here, and uh, there are trees inside, uh, and there are, uh, there are trees. And uh, if uh, I try to measure some ground control points with Genesis receiver, but it was not possible because I couldn't achieve fixed solution. And, uh, but uh, with the LiDAR, you can easily classify and uh, you can easily remove uh, forest. And this one, it's a classified point uh, point cloud. Uh, and uh, you can create contour lines within a few minutes. And this one, it's an example of uh, contour lines, which was automatically created with a point uh, from a classified point cloud. 
So uh, right now I show you the whole uh, workflow of data processing with a LiDAR. And as you can see, it takes 20 minutes to process all data set. And the accuracy is within three and four centimeters, definitely. And uh, I would like to, to invite another one user, uh, which, uh, which shows you how to use LiDAR for forest survey, how to use a backpack for forest survey from the ground, how to combine with data. And I think it's very interesting. And um, Evgeny? Yeah, hello. Uh, I'll start sharing my screen. Uh, just a second. Uh, uh, could you please come? Uh, Evgeny, we, we, we see you. Yeah, OK, excellent. So uh, uh, thank you very much for this very interesting opportunity. So uh, I would like to present uh, some of our first results on uh, uh, using this kind of, I call it aero terrestrial ultra high resolution laser scanner uh, for three vice forest inventory. And uh, uh, I would like to say thank you to this company Topodron. We are very much interested on their solutions. So we started to use Topodron solutions already several years ago when uh, Topodron issued or published their drones. And we, and we, we've got those drones for our research purposes. And once we heard about uh, uh, the new solution on uh, 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 laser scanning, I, I just invited immediately Maxim to Finland to come to test it and uh, to see, to test the solution in our research forest. Just a few words about myself. I'm uh, uh, working as a uh, senior research scientist in Natural Resource Institute Finland. And uh, in my past, uh, I was working quite a lot in different uh, uh, research activities and I was deeply involved into the forest inventory. For example, I was in, involved on, on developing national forest inventory system of Vietnam. Uh, at the moment, I'm doing uh, research in Natural Resource Institute Finland on dig digital technologies for practical forest management on, uh, I'm doing my research on forest fires forecasting and also early detection of pests and disease and uh, invasive species. So I'm, I have a long experience on digitizing forest resources and uh, uh, flying the drones. And of course, I know all those pros and cons when you are working with photogrammetry and photogrammetry, of course, it's a nice solution, but not always. So if you want to go into details you need a better, better solutions, a better approaches. In our research work in Nature Research Institute Finland, we are at the moment using uh, uh, Mavic and Matris uh, with upgraded solutions from Topadron. And uh, uh, we also have uh, Phantoms with uh, Genesis receiver. And uh, uh, we installed, for example, on our Matris, multi-spectral cameras. So at the moment we are mainly in past, we were working with Sequoia. Nowadays, we are working with this bundle of Red Edge in mix and also with Altum sensors because those sensors are, could be cross calibrated with the Sentinel data, which is very interesting and which is very promising. We are also working with the Vingtra uh, drone and using it for different large scale applications. But uh, uh, in uh, several research projects, I face the uh, challenge that when you fly those equipment, uh, with, uh, uh, for, for example, three wise inventory, uh, you could get uh, uh, very nicely trees. You could get quite many, many things. But then uh, a traditional approach requires that after, for example, aerial tri triangulation and photogrammetric ground uh, 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 point cloud reconstruction, you still need to go to forest to measure the trees and then, uh, uh, unfortunately, with this photogrammetry solution, you cannot see under the trees. And uh, there are several challenges in related to photogrammetry. Uh, first of all, that uh, uh, you don't see small trees. I'm talking about trees which are less than one meter in height. And uh, uh, because those are simply not visible uh, in, in dense canopy. And for some of applications, for example, in Finland, we are now developing continuous cover forestry approach. We really need to know the location of small seedlings in order to better plan future forest operations. Then the second challenge is if you want to do, for example, forest inventory with the photogrammetry, you still need to go by foot to forest and establish your ground truth data. So you still need to measure 
to identify the trees on, on, on the point cloud and need to measure the uh, trees uh, diameter in order to be able to calculate the diameter of all the trees from the model. And uh, this method is actually human dependent. So you need to go to forest, you need to establish sample plot, and uh, uh, you need to get a fixed solution under the dense canopy, which is sometimes very challenging task. And uh, 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 there are many uh, issues related to it. Uh, another challenge with photogrammetry in forestry, for example, if you uh, try to apply to, to fly in Finland, uh, for example, during winter time. So uh, the flying time during winter time, for example, in December is very short. So, for example, in UN, so in December, we have only uh, three or four hours of really good uh, lighting conditions uh, where we could fly the drone. And uh, uh, it means your time is very much limited. And uh, there is another challenge, for example, this photogrammetry, what do you see? You see the uh, top, of, uh, usually the points which are covering the top of the crown. So you don't see the shape of the trunk. And, for, and, and of course, you are not able to see or to measure the height of the branches of different sizes, and which is very interesting and very important because if you know the location of the height of the branches, for example, dead branches, it's a kind of one of the indicator of a good quality and means uh, good value. Uh, 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 we, and when, when Topodron announced this solution, so I invited Maxim to visit us to Joensu, to Finland, to make a test site. So we used one of our research plot where we made a lot of measurements. Where we measured about 1000 trees, uh, where we regularly flying drones for several years already, where we practically know every single tree and every single seedling location. Where we even planted the trees with uh, precise GNSS receiver. So this is kind of, we have a, like one case near UN, so where we have this kind of precision forestry in real test. And uh, uh, Maxim was very happy to come and we made a test. So we installed uh, this uh, topo drone LiDAR on our Matrix 210 and then we start flying. And uh, as you can see from the photographs, it was quite a challenging task. We practically were flying during the night time. So because uh, uh, light, uh, light time was very much limited. But then uh, after flying uh, uh, LiDAR, I encourage Maxim also to try to use it as a kind of terrestrial uh, way. And one way, of course, you can put it to backpack and then you can go to the, for example, to forest or to some, uh, some of your field areas. But uh, one was a more efficient way would be, for example, to sit down on the squadro bike and then just drive it through the forest and, and get the coverage. So let's go to those two data sets. So by this way, we collected two data sets, one from air and the second data set I called like terrestrial or ground data set. As you can see, a uh, result of laser aerial laser scanning from 70 meters, uh, we've got a very nice point cloud. And then after classification of the point cloud, we've got a digital elevation model. Actually this digital elevation model, the, uh, uh, the, the detailness of this digital elevation model was very, very big surprise for me because uh, the point cloud density was very high. So it means we were able to get su such minor details. For example, I found some of the some of the small channels which I never knew, knew about the existence in this area, even though I, I spent several years walking on this area. And by my understanding, I was knowing I'm, I know the area very well. Then the second step of processing we normalized the point cloud by the digital elevation model. And it's immediately give us a very quick overview of the value of the forest resources. Practically, as you can see from the screen, all the red areas representing the uh, commercially valuable trees. So mature, valuable, high trees with uh, a big commercial value. Green, you can see very clearly young stands and then blue is the ground. And here you can see also the power lines crossing, crossing the area. Let's look into the data. So what do we get out of this LiDAR data? So uh, I will not talk about in my presentation about accuracy. Of course, we checked the accuracy of this uh, data set. And I was very much surprised how accurate the data was, uh, uh, how accurate the data was collected with this device. And uh, I would maybe speak more about accuracy in about the terrestrial laser scanning later. Uh, here you can see on this slide the number of points per square meter. 
And the, you can see, of course, at the areas where the, the flying patterns were happening. So we have higher number of points uh, per square meter. But on average, as you can see from this graph, or graph on average, we are getting about 150 points per square meter, which is quite high for many applications. How we can use this uh, uh, high point density? One very simple solution is to process the data and to get it individual trees. So this is uh, totally automatic classification of the point cloud. So I was able in a few minutes to extract all the trees. Here you can see on the slide the trees colored by the tree number. So it's not a tree species, it's just a tree number, random tree number. And uh, uh, this was a really big surprise for me because uh, this uh, uh, point cloud allowed us to uh, identify even quite small trees, for example, 3.5 meter height. And this uh, identification of almost 300,000 trees, it took only 20 minutes. So if you think about measuring all those trees by uh, uh, in the field, it's uh, uh, mission impossible if you would like to do it with traditional techniques. What, what else we could get out of it? Uh, if we get, we, we get a tree's location, then we could measure the crown diameter, crown area. We could automatically uh, uh, get, of course, the location of every single tree. But what is the problem with the aerial data processing? From aerial data processing, we don't see the tree diameter. And this is kind of not a new, so it's uh, uh, those people which are using cluster scanning for forest inventory, usually the process is going this way, that you cannot measure the diameter directly. And then you again need to go to the field to, uh, to uh, establish sample plots. And then through the uh, ratio between the crown diameter and crown area, you can, for example, calculate the tree diameter. But uh, uh, this was a kind of uh, uh, one of the challenge of traditional other scanning. And uh, we tried at the same time to use a bit different approach. So we use the same scanner after the flight, we just take away scanner from the, uh, from the drone and then we mounted it on a backpack and then we sit to the quad bike and then we start to drive on, on a road in the same area. And you can see here the data point cloud what we received uh, from the road Roughly, uh, uh, we've got all the points within the distance of seven, uh, from 70 to 100 meters from the scanner. And uh, uh, we also increase the number of scanning angles. So the, when the drone is flying, the number of scanning angles is limited because there is no sense to scan, let's say, above the drone or some other areas. But while uh, you are driving or using an interestrial mode, you can use all this 360 degrees of scanning. And because your movement speed is not so high like movement speed of drone, it's usually giving you very huge uh, point density. Uh, one of the disadvantage of this kind of terrestrial laser scanning is of course, uh, for example, uh, you have in your point cloud also a quad bike, you have a shoulders, you have heads, you have uh, your colleague maybe traveling with you in this point cloud. That's why we removed all the points closer than two meters to the point cloud. And this has allowed us really to uh, uh, get high quality point cloud. But uh, uh, there is still chance to improve it accuracy by proper selection of angles and distances. And this would, I believe, crystallize the point cloud for future measurements. Let's look in the, how big density of point cloud we could get. So we were driving with uh, quadrocycle uh, with quad bike with uh, quite a normal speed. We, we just uh, go with something like maybe, I don't know, 20 kilometers per, per hour. So not, not very fast because it was a, 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 not a normal road, but like a field road. And with this speed, we've got uh, uh, roughly from 500 to 10,000 points per square meter. And of course here, of course you can influence the result because slower you're moving on the ground, the higher point density you get. And, but uh, kind of uh, outcome from this test showed that on average, if we go with the same scanner on the ground, we have like two times higher point clouds than from, from aerial uh, uh, platform. And uh, uh, why we wanted to have this kind of so dense point cloud, because if you then using the same scanner on the, on the ground, you can increase not only 
the density of the points, but what you can do also, you can increase also the number of angles, the number of viewing angles of the scanner. And this is giving you very nice, interesting opportunities. For example, uh, one of the way what you can do, you can measure the tree diameters directly. So using the point cloud data. So here on this graph, you can see that the tree, tree diameters were automatically, trees were automatically identified and the tree diameters at the breast height, meaning the height 1.3 uh, meter, we are automatically measured. And here, uh, uh, this uh, terrestrial uh, uh, point cloud allowed us to identify very small trees. So on aerial scanner, aerial point cloud, we were able to identify the smallest tree was 3.5 meter. In terrestrial uh, uh, laser scanning data, we were able to identify the smallest tree, which was less than one meter. And uh, uh, from this uh, uh, terrestrial scanning data set, we automatically measured the diameter of 4,000 trees. We measured the crowns of those 4,000 trees, tree height, crown diameter. And with, with most important, we were able to get the tree diameter directly from terrestrial uh, point cloud. One interesting issue about accuracy uh, because uh, as Maxim said, the accuracy of the point cloud is uh, Varying, uh, varying between from uh, about, let's say roughly from three to four centimeters. But when you're going on this terrestrial level, since your number of points in, is increasing, uh, there, is, there are certain ways how to increase the accuracy of the diameter measurement. And I checked uh, those diameter measurement with our field observations. And I would like to say that from 1000 trees, our average accuracy of this terrestrial measurements were uh, the error in uh, uh, diameter uh, measurements from terrestrial point clouds was less than two centimeters. But I believe is there are still ways to improve it by crystallizing the point cloud and by improving the point cloud. So if you think about like uh, why we use this terrestrial laser scanning to measure diameters. So in about one hour or let's say half an hour, we measured 4,000 trees. If you think about like, you will do the same job uh, with traditional forestry uh, equipment, like take, for example, the caliper and go and establish a plot. It would take us about 17 days. So 138 man hours to measure all those 4,000 trees. And here we were able to get those 4,000 trees is in less than half an hour. In Finland, the laser scanning is nothing new. So in, in Finland, in forestry, uh, the, uh, the forest inventory program started already in uh, 2010, uh, when the uh, systematically big areas in Finland were scanned from, from the air. And uh, uh, the, this program, which was uh, in last 10 years, was aiming for a point density of half point or up to one point per square meter. And this data is freely available and uh, uh, because it was collected by taxpayer money. And now there is a new program in Finland going on with on forest inventory, which is aiming to increase the point density almost 10 times. So the current point density we will have, we will have like five points per square meter. With Topodron solution, we have an opportunity to uh, uh, get point density from the air of 150 points per square meter and if we add this uh, uh, terrestrial laser scanning is about 500 points per square meter. So practically this, uh, I would say that this solution allows us to make this three-dimensional zoom almost 30 times on forest structure, which is, uh, I think, quite promising. And uh, if you think about flying a drone took us about 20 minutes and then driving quad bike took us about 30 minutes. I would say with this technology, we were able to measure very accurately uh, the trees over the area within, uh, with the speed of something like one hectare per minute. So from my point of view, this is very nice combination, allowed us to uh, uh, do this tree-wise forest inventory. And the uh, drone allows you to get a large coverage to measure inaccessible areas where you cannot go by foot or it's too costly to go by foot, or you cannot drive, for example, a quad bike or something, something like this, or car. And uh, uh, to uh, collect those diameters, you could use a quad bike, or it is possible to mount the same laser scanner on a car or any kind of vehicle. Or if, 
and uh, or you can just walk through the forest and, and with this scanner you get uh, a lot of data so uh, our next steps we are at the moment testing this data we are looking to the ways how to improve the accuracy and uh, i think uh, uh, we are looking mostly nowadays to the additional values from the data fusion. So what kind of additional value we could get by fusing the aerial data with the terrestrial data? And uh, I think in future, and uh, be because I like this uh, Topodron approach that it's like open source uh, thing, so you can really modify a lot of parameters. It's not like in many commercial system, everything is locked here. It is possible to modify quite many parameters and I think that in future, we could change the drone flying parameters to achieve the same accuracy than, uh, like terrestrial scanning. But of course, if it's drone, it would be more efficient and uh, uh, faster to get a bigger co coverage. So what kind of new type of measurements we could get from uh, 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 this scanner? The, I think the, one of the very interesting issues is to measure crown base, base height, because crown base height is practically indication where you have the end of your soul walk. So it's very important value to, uh, uh, to get uh, accurate assessment of the wood value. Then you can measure, for example, the strengthness of the stem. So you can find those uh, uh, stems which are not suitable for, for example, soil walk production, which is quite interesting to get really accurate commercial value of the forest. With uh, uh, this scanner, you can also get quite good approximate uh, estimation of the age of the trees. Of course, you cannot, you know, get up to one year, but there are ways how to calculate from the structure of the trees the uh, age, of, age of the age of the uh, of the trees. Uh, those parameters like crown base height, diameter height, the structure of the crowns could be used to get a wood quality assessment, could be used to get wood assortment assessment and really do this precise valuation of the, uh, of the wood. We found that this scanner was able to identify even small seedlings. We not yet find, found a way how to map the small seedlings from the drone, but we were able to see small seedlings less than uh, uh, 20 centimeters height from the terrestrial scanner. And uh, I think this, this technology offering us very interesting approach towards inventory during the winter and inventory during the night. So this could be done uh, simultaneously. And uh, uh, I believe it's, it's really an interesting opportunity. So if there are any questions, I would be happy to answer. Uh, Evgeny, thank you for your uh, very good presentation. And uh, uh, I, I, I was really impressed and I was re really proud to work with you in Finland. And I have some questions about your work because uh, I, I was very impressed about your data processing. And uh, how, do you uh, how do you think, how fast you can process data set to get, uh, to, get to precise counts of trees, for example, and uh, number of trees, uh, depths of uh, trees, uh, how fast you can uh, process data uh, yeah. after flight? Thank you very much, Maxim. Uh, this is a very interesting question and really I can show it the uh, speed here. I made the same area uh, several times before by uh, uh, kind of photogrammetry approach. So to cover the same area, uh, it, uh, I needed to make something about four flights with uh, Phantom or with Mavic or with Matrix at, in order to get a kind of good coverage and good representation of the tree. And this, uh, to calculate this amount of data, I spent it something like three days just running calculations. And for my calculations, I was using quite powerful cluster system based on several computers and uh, with uh, several graphical cards. And uh, uh, this took me really, uh, this processing took longer time than collecting collection of the data. So I would say to, uh, to do the same quality uh, uh, assessment of the same area, I would spend something like one working week. While this laser scanning, uh, we spent together something like uh, totally one hour of data collection and data processing 
was um, maximum two hours. So I see very clear benefit and the uh, uh, increase in speed. But and also, what about uh, this is without taking, but this is also like just pure, let's say, uh, uh, data processing without field data collection, which would require more and more days. So to, to, for example, then I would need to send the crew to, to the field to measure the trees on the ground to collect uh, additional parameters. So it's, it's really a long process. While uh, combining uh, drone data collection with uh, terrestrial data collection, uh, the same area could be inventoried with higher accuracy and almost like uh, 100 uh, times faster. So, and uh, uh, the next question, uh, is it necessary to make any field work uh, uh, when, you when you use LiDAR uh, to measure trees? Uh, is it necessary to go to the measure tape to measure trees? Or it's possible to measure directly from a point cloud? So how do you think right now? Uh, of course, you know, as we all know that all the maps are lying. <laughs> and <laughs> at the beginning, I would suggest to check the accuracy and to check how accurate uh, it, uh, the, how accurate result you get. But uh, once you will be sure that you can really see the, to get, you are able to get the accurate data, then you could get all those measurements directly from the terrestrial point cloud. So for example, all diameters, I believe could be measured from terrestrial point cloud. So you don't need and, uh, to come to forest mm -hmm. and touch the trees anymore. You just drive, for example, car, or you just drive a bicycle or quad bike, and then you get quite a lot of me detailed measurements from, from this information. Also, those measurements could be checked and could be corrected in office. This is, I think, quite a big advantage because uh, today in your answer is almost like minus 25. I would think uh, I would be, uh, I would not be able to spend maybe more than several hours in the field today. But uh, with a cup of coffee, explore, exploring your point cloud, you can, for example, select uh, uh, good trees and you can uh, filter the trees by different, for example, uh, accuracy standards. And there are tools nowadays how to estimate how accurate diameter fitting was carried out. Okay. And uh, what, uh, what, what is your opinion about photogrammetry survey and LIDAR survey? Uh, what is more accurate? What, is, uh, what do you think right now? Uh, because I know you use a lot of photogrammetry data sets before and you have a big coverage. And uh, how do you think? Uh, is uh, LiDAR competitive with the photogrammetry or uh, photogrammetry is not competitive with LiDAR right now? How do you think? Uh, obvious, uh, LiDAR gives a huge advantage on, on uh, accuracy and uh, speed of uh, data processing. Uh, but of course, the best, uh, the best solution would be in data fusion. So the best way would be to fly, for example, LiDAR with a camera to be able to colorize, for example, the uh, uh, point cloud. But uh, there are always uh, uh, kind of, it depends on applications. So uh, photogrammetry, the biggest advantage of the photogrammetry, it's a very cheap solution. So in many places, for example, if you do some projects in Africa, you cannot send a LiDAR there. It would be maybe too risky. But you can send, for example, a cheap drone and do some inventory of uh, uh, some plantations with, 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 with photogrammetry. But when you need accuracy and when you need a productivity and when you need, uh, for example, uh, uh, really uh, industrial applications like being able to measure the forest during the night or during a cold uh, weather, or difficult weather conditions, LiDAR gives you very interesting and uh, very promising opportunity. I think the future is in fusion. And how do you think about uh, multispectral data? Uh, is it possible to use LiDAR without multispectral data to define uh, uh, a type of trees, for example? Yeah, uh, it's, uh, I think it's, you can see even from this, this slide, you can see here that I'll try to make it bigger, like, if you look more carefully on the on the shape of the crowns, this is a birch. Uh -huh. For example, you see, the, look on this tree. This is a birch. Is it a ground survey or is no, it, it a, uh, it's, uh, it's aerial survey? Aerial survey. Bird. And mm -hmm. all others, those kind of columns are spruces. So there are nowadays 
techniques, how you can identify the species from uh, laser scanning data. And this technique is based on those alpha shape metrics. So practically it is possible to identify the species just uh, analyzing the LIDAR data. And uh, the accuracy of this identification is uh, almost the same as you would use a multispectral camera to uh, recognize the species. And also one of the issue is the multispectral cameras. One of the disadvantage of multispectral cameras, you can use them only in uh, uh, summertime and you need all leaves all to be open to identify the species. If there is no any photosynthesis, you cannot use multispectral cameras. So that's why increasing the density of the laser scanning data, it's one way to uh, be able to estimate quite many parameters directly from the point cloud. Super. Uh, Maxim, do you have any, uh, do, do you have any questions uh, right now? Could you, could you write some questions to us? Uh, yes. Uh, does our software generate the control lines or just the point clouds? Okay. Uh, uh, yes, of course, uh, software for point cloud processing for strip alignments allows you to gener uh, uh, allows you to classify point cloud and allows you to generate control lines. It's very easy and uh, it usually takes a few minutes and we will show all steps of data processing during our training and uh, uh, usually within a few days you will get the, the whole knowledge of data processing. Uh, the, you will get all information about workflow. And what you need is just one software to, uh, to, to make strip alignment, to classify point cloud, and to create control lines. It's very easy. And to uh, vectorize data set as well. But of course, you need to know how to use this software because in a, uh, you, you should know uh, real techniques and so on. So I would suggest that training is very important. And uh, I think uh, all our clients which, uh, who comes to our, uh, all our clients who come to our training, firstly, they said, okay, we know everything because we made, uh, we are professional surveyors. Uh, but after one day, they decided, uh, usually they decided to continue training because we show a lot of the special techniques, a lot of special knowledges, how to improve, improve accuracy, how to combine data set and so on. Uh, our presentation is just a small level of, of our knowledges usually. I think Evgeny will prove it uh, usually. We, and we open for a new, uh, few invest, uh, new investigation techniques and usually we combine our uh, knowledges with our, uh, other professionals from this team. Um, Maxim, do you have uh, other questions? Maxim, can I add a couple yes. of sentences to, to it? Uh, today we had a very interesting questions about accuracy. And if you think about what kind of factors with this laser scanning are influencing accuracy, there are practically, it's not a rocket science, number of points, angles, distances. And so there are practically those three variables which you can vary quite a lot with the drone you can change those variables quite a lot with a drone. You can change those variables on the ground. So I have a kind of feeling that there are quite, uh, there are ways to get even better accuracy than for example, three centimeters or, or 10 centimeters, just by kind of smarter uh, analysis of the point cloud. I totally agree with you. And of course, we, uh, we study a lot of possibility to increase accuracy. As you remember, first time when we met uh, uh, three, day, uh, three, three years ago, uh, we just uh, used photogrammetry and uh, we, we, were, uh, we were lucky that we achieved accuracy within five or 10 centimeters. After that, we improved accuracy for photogrammetry within two centimeters. And uh, right now we're just uh, working uh, and uh, together with our team, all our users receive uh, a, new, a new version of software, a new technology, a new workflow to increase our accuracy. Uh, to, uh, and we work together with, uh, with all our uh, clients to improve uh, products as well. So I think uh, it's just starting point with the LiDAR. As you can see right now, um, uh, uh, can I share my screen? Uh, yes. Oh, we see you. Yeah, okay. So. Ah, you, you me. So uh, as you can see right now, it's just a small example of of, of, uh, of our improvement of LiDAR technology. 
before it was not uh, there is no any solution right now at the market where, where you can use lidar on the drone like this one and you use the same one lidar system for ground survey and you don't need to spend a lot of money just to pay for the same sensor or in the backpack so we just provide a special equipment just to improve your flexibility in the walk if there is some, uh, some spaces where there is no possibility to fly or where it's better to get a survey from the ground. You can use this one equipment. It's very easy and uh, just install it here. And we, we made it because some of our clients ask us, uh, could you create this solution? And we said, yes. Uh, and uh, uh, Bruma, I think, uh, Bruma, one month ago, you just told me, where is, where is the backpack? And now it is here. So we just, uh, wait. and uh, the same situation with the software. Uh, as soon as we receive some feedbacks, we increase uh, productivity of the software. One, one month ago, the productivity of the software was uh, uh, efficiency of the software of point cloud creating was to just uh, create point clouds within 30 minutes. But right now it's just three minutes. So you just, uh, uh, just uh, uh, as soon as you uh, join our team, uh, as, as soon as, our, uh, as you join our community you will get a lot of improvements in the future and uh, yes. maxim can we uh, can we ask uh, can we answer some questions more and uh, we, we will uh, we will ask bruma to make a presentation as well uh, 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 yeah. uh just yeah, a moment okay. uh, uh, hello i just wanted to add one uh, inter uh, issue that like to uh, if you think about making three wise forest inventory with uh, with the photogrammetry, you need to fly double grid. So you need to spend more resources of your drone, less productivity. While with LiDAR, you don't need to do double grid. You just get it in one line. Yes, yeah, sure. And uh, this is uh, and if you process data in the forest with the photogrammetry, I think it's very difficult to process data set. Uh, Evgeny, uh, uh, as soon as Evgeny process a lot of data set, he knows that how difficult to align images in the forest in a high uh, high wind, for example. But uh, with lidar, you always has uh, direct measurement. Maxim, do you have some questions more, and we will continue? Uh, yeah. Uh... Can the points acquired with the LiDAR on a backpack uh, be colorized with RGB? Yes, yeah, sure. And uh, as I already show you some examples uh, of a data set, uh, uh, of, uh, you can easily colorize point cloud. You can easily do it. And uh, there are different type of uh, Installa installation for the drone. You can use camera with the, with the drone installed together with the LiDAR, like this one. But another one solution is, you, is use your existing uh, PPK solution with uh, uh, Mavic 2 Pro or Phantom 4 Pro. As, as soon as you, you get very precise georeferenced images, you just need to make uh, preliminary air triangulation just to create a block of images without creating uh, of detailed point cloud, dense point cloud. You just need to create this block of images, and after that, it will automatically colorize point cloud. And what we already achieved, that they can colorize very small details like wires with a real color, if we make very precise uh, georeferenced images. So in this case, I would say that uh, uh, it's very easy to colorize point cloud, and you don't, you don't need to use a camera on the drone at the same time. Why? Because with the LiDAR, you can fly with a low, uh, low overlapping, uh, with a uh, low, uh, with less overlapping, but but for photogrammetry, in order to uh, create uh, block alignment, you, you, in order to uh, make photogrammetry processing, you need to increase overlapping. In this case, you will uh, lose your productivity. But what would we suggest that we, you can fly with the lidar, and you you will use our PPK drones like Mavic 2 Pro or Phantom 4 Pro. Uh, you will fly on a high altitude, you will cover bigger area, and uh, you will increase overlapping to uh, to make uh, photo alignment, and after that you colorize point cloud. So it's easy, like uh, this one project. And uh, uh, in this project, there is a part where we made survey at night, this one. And after that, we made uh, uh, we made a separate survey at, uh, with the light, uh, with the sun to make photos and to colorize point cloud as well. So this one part was colorized from different light. 
And uh, what I would suggest that uh, sometimes in case of efficiency, it's better to use different drones for to get images. Uh, Maxim? Uh, there is a question about species of the trees, but I guess uh, Evgeny already gave an answer for that. Evgeny? Yes, uh, you can uh, uh, recognize the species just by uh, uh, by uh, by uh, processing the uh, uh, processing the uh, point cloud. So if you can look, especially in boreal conditions, if you look on the trees, for example, the shape of their crowns, like usually birch is more like pyramid, not uh, uh, spruce is more like pyramid. And the birch have this kind of another shape of so those shapes can be quite nicely quantified by applying this kind of feature or metric which is called alpha shape metric so practically you can classify all your trees into different uh, using different metrics into different uh, shapes and then by knowing which kind of species having what kind of shape you can then uh, uh, divide it uh, uh, identify the species quite efficiently so you don't need you don't uh, you don't. I just wanted to say that you don't always need to have multispectral data, uh, multispectral laser scanning data. By increasing the point density, you increase the amount of information. And already from geometry, there are quite good possibilities to do this discrimination. But in future, I would suggest if uh, uh, Topodron would look more into multispectral laser scanners, it's uh, it's definitely the future. Uh, yes, sure. Uh, Maxim? Thank you. Uh, uh, what are the computer requirements? Recommended configuration for creation and use of Pine Cloud. We cannot hear you. We can't hear. Just while Maxim is fixing the issues with the uh, with the uh, 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 camera, I would say like for photogrammetry processing, we are, we are using quite a uh, big uh, um, uh, quite a big cluster with a lot of uh, uh, or those graphical cards. And uh, this was but uh, this point cloud, what I showed today, we are just on normal laptop, nothing. So this could be done quite quickly in the field. Okay, and uh, what I would say that uh, data processing, uh, data processing in uh, uh, of lidar doesn't require any uh, uh, any powerful computer, and uh, what uh, what you need is just a simple computer and uh, the most uh, uh, the most uh, 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 part of data processing uh, it's just uh, point cloud generation. And with the top LIDAR software, you just uh, spend a few minutes to generate a point cloud. And uh, it doesn't have uh, big requirements, uh, strong requirements to your computer. In comparison in photogrammetry, with in photogrammetry, you need to invest more in data processing uh, uh, software, and you need to spend more in data processing uh, a machine. And I think in this case, uh, LiDAR is more competitive. You just invest in LiDAR, but you don't need to spend money in a, in a, in a uh, processing machine or laptop, powerful laptop or machine. And uh, we have another one question uh, about, uh, uh, about strip alignment. And uh, one of our users asked us about, is it possible to align a uh, data set from terrestrial LiDAR uh, with the ground control points? Or is it possible to... Uh, 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 or is it possible to align uh, 
terrestrial uh, data set uh, with aerial data set automatically. And I would say that it's very easy to align uh, terrestrial LIDAR data set uh, together with aerial data set. And what you need uh, is just uh, make a uh, precise trajectory. After that, you upload point cloud, and you need uh, you made the same strip alignment technology uh, like for aerial survey. And we don't use any ground control points to align terrestrial lidar. Of course, it's possible to align uh, terrestrial data with the ground control points, but it is not necessary really. Uh, just uh, look, this one it's uh, uh, aerial survey, and. Uh, this part, it's just a uh, red one. It's aligned uh, uh, terrestrial survey. And this one, it's uh, just trajectory. And uh, uh, and uh, this trajectory combines different uh, different uh, mo motion parts. First of all, we uh, we uh, we use a quadro bike, and after that, we walk uh, in the forest area uh, between trees here, and we just align this data set as well. So it's very easy. And what you need, you need just to calibrate angles uh, and it's uh, really easy. Uh, what, question, uh, what questions do we have more? I just check. Uh, and another one question was, is it possible to use one line for, for survey? I would say that it is possible, but it's better to use two lines. In this case, you, make, uh, you will check the accuracy and you always make uh, automatic strip alignments. Okay, uh, if you have more questions, uh, Maxim, how do you think? If you, we don't have any questions, uh, I would like to invite Bruma from uh, Romania. He's our professional user and he took part in our training course in uh, Switzerland uh, uh, to, for training for, for course for photogrammetry data processing and for LiDAR data processing. And right now he had a huge amount of, uh, of uh, survey job, which he made uh, together with LiDAR, together with photogrammetry solution. And Bruma, uh, we invite you to, uh, we invite to, to make your presentation and to share your experience because we are open for any feedbacks and uh, it's very good uh, for us to get from you any knowledge as how you might survey in the field. Maxim, thank you for, for your presentation. Uh, I want to know if you will see my screen. Yes, we, we see your screen. In full screen mode or control mode? Uh, everything is good if you switched off uh, if you switched off your uh, second microphone it will be better if not uh, okay let's continue okay I use only one only one mic I don't think it will be better so uh, let's start my presentation I'm uh, I present a less company which is uh, established by uh, 2005, but in the name of BDS topography will uh, much sooner. Uh, I want to present uh, Tropodon solution by my perspective as a lens of the company. We try the best to keep the, the market with the, with the tools. We have a lot of uh, instrument, microlic, all the time we want to be uh, updated with uh, software, with uh, equipment. Also, we are using GPS, total station. Uh, in the last five years, we start using using drones. We are a classic. We are, we are a classical uh, company which provides topographical maps. Also, uh, here is on this screen I have. Um, part of my, uh, my equipment. And you can see here I put uh, the new one, the PPK solution, which in my opinion, it's a good uh, upgrade. And also the LiDAR is the new, new, new trend. Uh, I will show very short um, few, few types of our works, classical topographic plans, uh, measurements for uh, road rehabilitation, uh, we can generate, you know, from CAT file, uh, cross section, and anything. Also, here we have uh, quantity uh, about uh, fill and cut. In, uh, in this particular case, it was a new highway in, in Romania. And also, a project for new building. 
and monitor infrastructure. So uh, we start, uh, already told you, we start with the um, classical Phantom 4, new uh, node UK. We, we measured this stone, I think, uh, five years, but uh, after I, uh, I make a little bit of research, I decide to upgrade my, uh, my, my, uh, my drone. And for, for uh, you know, I have two, two, two equipment for you. The first one is the PPK solution, Mavic 2, Mavic, uh, sorry, Phantom 4. Uh, here I want to show you a very small uh, job we can do with, uh, with this drone. My client is a parking asphalt company. They want to know the surface, the surface uh, of asphalt inputted on the, on, the, on the field. I use uh, top of them uh, applicated for DJF and P4, and also for uh, processing for processing uh, data. I use uh, my my GPS in strong, but in another case, I use uh, Romanian national. Uh, uh, release file from national station because I forget I forget my, uh, my GPS at home. Uh, here I have to measure four kilometers. So the four kilometers, if it was necessary to measure classical with GPS or total station, take more time. But in this particular case, it was 15 meters of flight and for processing, I think in total in three or uh, four hours, I have everything delivered to, to my client. Then I spend more time on, on, on driving because it was a little far away from my uh, headquarters in, uh, in Transylvania. Uh, here you can see uh, uh, the four kilometers road, but was not so, uh, so not so, only a lot of auto and 2D, 2D uh, data that requires uh, 3D point cloud or, uh, or something, uh, something like this. The next one, the next equipment I have for you, it's a uh, uh, 100, uh, which I install on uh, DJI Matrix uh, uh, RTK, but I upgrade with uh, PPK solution. And here, I buy this product, I think, uh, one month and a half ago. But I, lot to, I have a lot of work to do, especially in, uh, especially in uh, river survey. And this picture, uh, what I show you, I have so river survey. And here, it's a cross-section of uh, data where you can see the quality of the point cloud. Ah, for colorization, I use, I'm sorry, if you see here, I use the... Uh, uh, 4S uh, camera to get uh, to get picture and also to verify the the point guard. Maybe you remember, Maxim, when you have the time, I asked you if it's, it's possible to have a point cloud, but not only point cloud, RGB con point cloud, and uh, was one of my requests which you which you provide me. And here, it's I use a different software for uh, create automatically cross uh, cross section. Uh, here, my client want to know uh, the fluids and want to improve uh, this uh, this river. In this picture, also you have the classification of the, of the point cloud. Uh, automatically, I generate the contour, line, contour lines and also uh, a great tool that I like. You can choose what scale to generate the map. For example, my client wants to calculate also uh, in this particular case uh, flows, and it was very easy because they have contour lines and also I have a uh, lot of points with uh, 3D, uh, 3D details. And on the bottom of the, my slide, I have a, I have a cross section which was made automatically with a uh, few buttons of my mouse. Here it's a classical classical uh, map which uh, I use also 
So uh, then to compare the data between uh, between this uh, this uh, between uh, I use GPS to collect the data and also I use I use, I use uh, LIDAR. Uh, the difference was very not not so it was not so big. It was very good actually good quality. And also I can uh, take points and information anywhere anywhere on this uh, surface I want. Here I uh, generate the uh, DTM digital surface model, which uh, was created from, uh, from the classificate uh, time clouds. Um, you can see here the comparison between portafort and uh, and uh, DTM. In the time when I made the flight, the light condition was not so good because it was near the winter, and this. We spent uh, a little bit more time because it's like not, I think they fly with uh, I think six meters per second. And in this case, it's actually on the on the work, it's um, a rehabilitation project. Uh, actually, my college is right now on the field, it's 15 kilometers. Uh, I measure these 15 kilometers in, uh, in one day. I'm using five uh, uh, five set of battery, and uh, I achieve photo photo point cloud, and then now my colleague want to collect the data with uh, GPS, not because I want, because uh, really those uh, rules is necessary to measure uh, uh, some to measure data with uh, GPS or to station to have uh, to have a good uh, result also to. We, we, we can we can you know, we can uh, already use the final product of the lighter, but in the future we will be. Here is the is is point cloud. You see the difference of uh, of elevation. And here I uh, because I I have also camera mount on the my drone. I have a little comparison between. Point cloud, which was generated by uh, by a drone, and on the right, on the right is the lidar point cloud. It's same. It's it's probably same same condition when I take this uh, screen, and you see here very clear the the, the benefit of the of the of the lidar. Uh, my conclusion, my conclusion is uh, you can use photogrammetry. But also with the light as a game change. Uh, the solution for me was a uh, was a good, uh, good investor. Also, a good, uh, good 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 investor. Also, if you if you use the right software, you get right you get good uh, good uh, result. And I want to say the drone provide me a very good uh, training, and I want to say thank you, Maxim, for this uh, this training. And yeah, we, we I learned a lot of things from you and for, the, for this training. I after the, after training I study more information, and yeah, I want to say thank you, thank you for uh, for the for the training. Also, I want to say thank you for for watching us. And if you want to follow us as a Company, we have we are on social media, and um, but I want to recommend everyone to invest in the future. In general conclusion for me, uh, the next step because total station GPS. The next step, in my opinion, is the pilot. Uh, Bruma. Uh... Robert, thank you for your presentation, and uh, I would like to ask some questions for you. Uh, how do you think, uh, what is the efficiency of LiDAR? How many kilometers you can survey per day? So if you, uh, of course, LiDAR is very expensive for equipment in comparison with a uh, uh, with PPK drone, but uh, what is the best benefits of using LiDAR? How do you think? The project I do, I think it was uh, 15, kilo, up to 15 kilometers. Uh, but I fly five battery, 
in this lighting condition because I want to have a good picture. Uh, also, I fly. Uh, I have a small job that I fly night. It's a big change, uh, in my opinion, to fly uh, to fly with uh, radar uh, payload because in time your money come back in your account. You know, it's it's a good investment. And uh, another question. Uh, as soon as you compare uh, efficiency of LiDAR and photogrammetry, and you already use uh, Phantom 4 Pro PPK upgraded by our company, and you use our LiDAR system as well, how do you think? What is the difference in efficiency in comparison of photogrammetry and uh, uh, LiDAR? And what, uh, uh, and, uh, what is the uh, accuracy of uh, photogrammetry and LiDAR survey? Uh, survey? What, which is one is more accurate or it has the same accuracy? How do you think? In my opinion, LiDAR is definitely more accurate. But if you, you know, it depends what kind of job you have. My company have more type of jobs. And in some type of job, I use only uh, Phantom 4. But the big jobs and the most of the job I use, I use uh, LiDAR system. Example, I, I have only two jobs made by uh, Phantom and 15 jobs made by, uh, by LiDAR. So it's a big difference. It's okay, it depends what, what the client uh, needs. But definitely I fly a lot with, uh, with LiDAR. Uh, I totally agree with you, uh, and thank you for your answer. Why? Because when we uh, when we designed first of all photogrammetry solution, I was very keen of this solution, and I was dedicated that photogrammetry it is the best one, and especially with Mavic 2 Pro, which is lightweight and uh, it's easy to fly, and it has very good camera, and uh, it provides very good point cloud, and it is lightweight. But as soon as we design LiDAR, now I understand that I don't like to use photogrammetry at all because it's too, uh, it's, uh, it is, uh, um, uh, it's not so fast in comparison with LiDAR. And uh, every time when we fly with LiDAR, we have the same accuracy. It's very, very stable. But when we use photogrammetry, we depends on uh, lighting condition, we depends on uh, flight speed and so on. So in this case, uh, I'm totally agree. And uh, this one, uh, it's a, a good approval of uh, benefits of LiDAR. If you just made 15 projects uh, within one month with LiDAR and just uh, five projects with photogrammetry, it's, I think it's uh, really, uh, it proves uh, uh, efficiency, I think. Uh, and I like, uh, that you use it in a real conditions. And um, uh, for me, it's very important that we provide training. And uh, after, uh, uh, how long uh, uh, did it take you to start to make a survey after the training? Uh, uh, what, uh, and uh, what do you do? You think it is necessary to improve in our training? How do you think? I start to fly, and remember when I uh, arrived in Romania, and the, in, in the I'd like to direct it to the to the job, and after I uh, uh, I go home. So <laughs> was was a good training. It was a good training, yeah. and also I have to say something. It's as a lens surveyor, it's better to have more data because you never know when the clients need some information from you. Okay. Uh, okay. It is. It's good to to hear you, and uh, I like uh, that you show your real uh, data sets. And of course, uh, next uh, next step it's uh, uh, lidar survey uh, based on the car. I think uh, but as soon as you make a lot of um, um, if, as soon as you have a lot of job for road survey, I think it will help you as well. <laughs> you remember when I meet you first time, I ask you. Then we have the perfect solution. <laughs> okay, so one month after after we we design it, and uh, I would like to thanks a lot to you and to Evgeny that they show real examples of lidar survey, and uh, okay. uh, because we receive a lot of questions from people, and usually uh, right now uh, everybody knows about PPK solution for photogrammetry, and everybody use it, but uh, I think it's time uh, time to change their mind, the uh, time to change the mind of surveyors. If you need to be competitive in on the market right now you 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 should move to photogrammetry uh, f you should move from photogrammetry to lidar survey i'm totally 
uh, I am 100% sure. Why? Because the price is less and you don't need to spend a lot of money for processing machine. You save your time and you uh, decrease number of people which is involved in the field work. I think you will decrease it in uh, more time. And uh, the, the main advantage that you can provide results within a few days after, the, uh, after your flight. Uh, it's uh, amazing, really. Okay, uh, if we have any questions, uh, we can, uh, 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 we, uh, we will answer. Uh, if we don't have any questions, uh, how do you think? Do we have any questions? Ah, we are just thinking of starting. What is everything that I need? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, what you need, uh, just you need LiDAR solution. Uh, it costs uh, starting from uh, uh, it, it costs uh, uh, seventeen hundred five uh, seventeen thousand five hundred, and you will need a, a drone to to install lidar. It's a good question. Why? Because right now uh, everybody think about Matrix three hundred. It's a good one drone, but it costs it. It looks like it costs nothing. Uh, but when you buy batteries, when you buy a, a charging station, it starts to cost uh, too high price. And if you find, or if you already use ex uh, your existing Matrix 200, I think this one it's the best machine right now. Why? Because it's very easy to carry, uh, to carry, and it it is cheap right now. And you can buy this drone for. Uh, Bruma, uh, do you remember which price did you pay for Matrix 200 right now? Honestly, I don't know, but it was a good price because I stay one week to decide which drone I, I want to buy, and I decide to buy the last one. And yes. especially because of the charger and battery, which yes. might be very expensive. Yes, and uh, I think, uh, so what you need? You need a drone. You can use uh, existing Matrix 200, Matrix 600, Matrix 300 if you want to invest in any one drone. But uh, what what advantages of Matrix 200? It's a uh, current case. It's less. Uh, it has less size than uh, uh, Matrix 300. It, you shouldn't spend a lot of money for batteries, uh, and it flies just uh, eight minutes less than Matrix uh, 300. Uh, what else? Uh, you can and of course you can use Matrix uh, 600 as well. But uh, this drone doesn't have uh, doesn't have uh, obstacle avoidance system because it's very important to ensure your safe flights because you have very expensive equipment on the drone in this case i would suggest to use this one models matrix 200 or matrix uh, 300 and uh, uh, you need software um, uh, software uh, costs approximately starts from 3000 for point cloud for strip, al strip alignment and point cloud generation and uh, you should invest in a, uh, our cloud based solution to post process uh, genesis and imu data or to buy inertial explorer software i think it it will uh, it will add a few thousand dollars so I think uh, uh, this is what you need to start. Uh, or you, you can tr try to hire existing LiDAR if you have a project. Uh, you can hire existing LiDAR solution from our clients and they can make survey for you. And after that, you can invest in your own solution. Um, and uh, I think it's a good option as well because uh, I think one project uh, of survey in the forest area with LiDAR will help you to on money to buy a new one lidar and to get a lot of money and uh, i think it's uh, my answer uh, okay so if you have any questions we can answer if we don't have any questions i would like to say thank you for for all participants in our uh, uh, in our uh, online uh, seminar and uh, i especially i would like to thank to Roma and Evgeny because uh, uh, I really like to see you and I really like to hear your real feedback in the f from the field. <laughs> okay, uh, so Maxim, do we have any questions? No. Okay, thank you for participating and uh, I, I invite you to join our seminars. Uh, why? Because next time we will show how to process data and how to uh, make a uh, survey of power lines and we make some more additional uh, data processing seminars and we will, we will make uh, some uh, uh, online event uh, together with UGCS, how to plan missions for LiDAR as well, how to use UGCS. I think it will be uh, necessary and uh, uh, it's important for users to know. 
Okay, thank you very much and uh, see you next time.